Hi, welcome to the next uh, little video on economics and finance and the maths related to it. We're going to take a look today at the sum of a geometric series. Um, so the world of economics and finance really do depend on these geometric series and what they all add up to. They're an extension of compound interest and are fundamental to understanding how loan repayments are calculated or what happens when you uh, place a regular amount of money into a savings account. In the previous example, we kept the amount of money the same at the beginning. In this one, we're going to see what happens when you want to add an equal amount of money each time, as well as getting interest on your payment. So just here, I've got a little spreadsheet where the calculations on the compound interest are clearly shown. Here we see that this thing here, 100 euros of original investment, um, our ratio, how much we multiply each time, 1.05. And down here, period number one, we've got 100 before we add interest. At the end of period number two, we've got 105. 110, 25, and so on. So each of these individual numbers is a member of the sequence. So the sixth member of the sequence is 127 and 63. A series, however, is what happens when you add all of these numbers up. And you can see here down in Excel at the bottom there, 680. 0.19. That is the sum of this geometric series. So I'll just say it again. A series is where you add up the members of a sequence. And the idea is fundamental to understanding a lot of what happens in finance and economics. So let me just move that out of the way. So I've got a bit of space to write on. So the sum of a geometric series. Let's just call it a great big S. What is it equal to? Well, we've seen it uh, in that Excel thing. We saw we had some starting value, uh, A, which in our case was 100. Okay. The next one down, the next period down, it was that amount that we put in multiplied by whatever the rate was. So this is the amount of money we put in last year multiplied by the interest and this is the amount of money we put in this year which has not yet been multiplied and therefore has no interest attached. Now we can imagine that we could carry this on and have multiple years and we can go to the end here and for reasons which will become clear in a minute this sequence I'm going to end with a to the r and let's get this right, a to the n minus 1. Now, how do we get a simple formula which allows us to add up all of these things individually without calculating each individual one as we had done in that spreadsheet? So what I'm going to do now is to show you the way that this is done is I'm actually going to now take the sum and I'm going to multiply it by R, whatever that R value is, the ratio. Now what this will do, and which is a clever piece of mathematics, is it will cause this A up here to become a R1. We've just taken the R and multiplied it through. And that same thing applies. Um, I've got a bit of a mistake up here. That should be a 2. Uh, a R2 and so on. It's going to go to a r n minus 1 and then the final one which is r times this is going to be a r to the n. Now I'm going to subtract one from the other. I'm going to have s minus s r. There's nothing here so a minus nothing is a and then each of these ones if you ignore that little writing error there, it's going to cancel out. And we're going to be left with this one here. A minus A R to the N. 
and that's it that's completely covered our entire series that we're adding up now we just have to do some rearrangements because remember what we're looking for is this value here so we're going to factor out that s s into s goes one times s into sr goes r times equals we're going to factor out the a over here also a into a goes one time minus this one which is therefore a r to the n and then we just need to do a little division sum and we end up with the statement that s is equal to a over 1 minus r to the n or divided by 1 minus r and if we actually take this little division sum here 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r and multiply the top and bottom by minus 1 in other words 1 we can actually rewrite this slightly into a more common form and we have the a into r to the n minus 1 over r minus 1 and that's it that's our formula which will give us the sum of our geometric series and the n here is the number of terms that we're adding up so let's see if that actually works let's get an example of that particular thing working i'll just put a little um, excuse me that strange thing appears on my screen get off <laughs> um, let's take this choose a, a different color and i'll put a box around that that's an important thing for you to take away from this excuse me for not being able to draw nice straight boxes Let's go back to the example we had earlier on, the Excel example here. Bring that back into the screen so that you can see it. What we found was that Excel told us that the sum of that geometric series was 680.19. Let's see if our formula gives us the same answer. So the sum, I'm just going to choose my pen differently again, choose a different color. The sum is the A, which is the starting amount, 100, multiplied by 1, sorry, R to the N minus 1, which in this case is going to be 1.05. I'm just going to write that out again, one step at a time. So it's 100 times 1.05. And in that spreadsheet, there were six terms all together 1.05 to the power 6 minus 1 all divided by 1.05 minus 1 100 times uh, 1.30 no, 3400001 minus 1 over 0 0.05 which is 100 times 0 0.34001 divided by 0 0.05 and when you tap those numbers into your calculator what you get is 680.19 so there we go our formula for the sum of that geometric series gives us the same answer as the series shown on the uh, Excel spreadsheet here. There it is at the bottom, 680.19. So there you go. That's the sum of a geometric series. All you really need to be aware of is the formula here. The most common part of that formula to remember is this piece here. And that, we will see, gets used later on in formulas we need to calculate loan repayments and other uh, calculations based in the world of finance. Okay, that's enough for now. See you again later.